Good morning and welcome back to Outdoor Beards, where today we're going to remodel the bathroom. Before we jump into our project today, I want to say thank you to everyone. Uh, in my last video, I announced that my wife and I were pregnant with our daughter. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my daughter. And I'm super excited. And the, the amount of positivity that I got back uh, from so many people in the comments, um, that, that was really quite surprising. And uh, it, was, it was really nice to hear some of those comments and, and just the well wishes. And um, yeah, so that was really cool. And I wanted to say thank you. So if you're wondering, she is now two years old. She's amazing. She's wonderful and adorable. She's very high spirited. Um, she does not sleep well, <laughs> which is actually one of the reasons that you haven't seen me for a while. And of course, my son, he just loves being a big brother. Anyway, thank you all for the well wishes. I really appreciate that. And to the one guy who said he didn't care about my kids and to get on with the project, you can go ahead and watch someone else's channel. I'm sure you'll see plenty of my kiddos as we go along. In fact, uh, today's project is for the kiddos. We are remodeling my kids' bathroom. Our house was built in 06, and it kind of has all of the boring stuff that you would find from a, a house made in that decade. So we're going to be replacing our linoleum floor with tile, we're going to take out the vanity, replace that with something that pops a little bit better, all new hardware, and then my wife has made a special request for wainscoting on the wall where we hang the towels. To start this project, we're taking everything out of the bathroom except for the tub. In reverse. You want to see if you can fit in there? Don't you close it? I won't close it. Okay. <laughs> you can fit in there. When I started tearing out the old backsplash, there was really no way to do this without destroying the wall. But since we're painting anyway, it's one of those things that it's not super important because we're going to go and fix all the drywall. The vanity itself is only held in by a couple screws, so it's pretty easy. I did have to cut around the tubing because I didn't want to mess with that. I have a plumber coming in, he's, he's going to work on that side of things. And then of course, pulling out a toilet is just a couple of bolts. That's quick. What was not easy was pulling out the floor. I started by just pulling up the linoleum, but when I tried to remove the underlayment, it got pretty difficult. Uh, whoever installed this did not care about how many staples they used to hold it down. There was a thousand staples in here. So I used an oscillating cutting tool to cut along the tub line and some areas along the wall where the particle board couldn't get pulled out from under the drywall. I'm pretty sure that the underlayment got installed before the drywall did, and so there was all this... There was staples underneath the drywall that I couldn't get to, so I just cut along that. Then, using sophisticated demolition techniques, hammer and pry bar, and a lot of time, I pulled up the rest of the subfloor. By pulling up, I really mean dis disintegrated into small dust particles. So many staples. And finally, I vacuumed. Uh, when I start the construction portion of a project, I like to kind of start with a clean work area. So demolition is pretty messy. Make sure you get that all cleaned up, vacuumed up, wipe down any surfaces that might have gotten covered, and then you'll be ready to start the actual construction side. Next up is the wainscoting, which I decided to make myself, which is actually a lot easier than it sounds. You can buy prefabricated wainscoting and just nail it to the wall. Um, but I like doing things myself, so I just made my own. It's actually really easy to just take uh, quarter inch MDF, cut it into strips, uh, how wide the strips are is up to you, and you chamfer both edges of the strips. Put a 1x4 on the wall, make sure that's nice and level, cap that off with a 1x2, and then put your strips underneath. The chamfered edges create a nice clean look on the wall, and they're easy to caulk, so you don't have any sort of like striping going on in there. Now here's where my OCD goes a little nuts. I can't have trim that's brushed or rolled, um, I just can't stand it. So I went out and bought a very nice little paint sprayer. This allowed me to spray primer on the wood, sand it, spray paint it properly. Now a quick side note here about experience when it comes to spraying and painting. When I was young I was actually a painter and so I have some experience with this type of setup. The setup is very easy to use but if you're inexperienced with it it's really easy to um, it's easy for it to kind of get away from you and for you to put too much paint and so it's one of those things, if, if you're going to go this route with a paint sprayer, maybe do a little practice runs or something, just go into that with caution if you don't have experience with that type of equipment. And of course when the wainscoting was finished, my wife loved it. Painting the walls and the ceiling before we move on to the floors. 
So mask everything off that you don't want to get paint on, uh, starting with some drywall touch-ups, fill the holes, patch any pad spots with mud, and then retexture the areas that need it. Over this I painted a layer of kills. This works really well to cover the old color and primer walls for the new paint. Then it's time to paint, which in this case I did twice because my wife decided to change the color partway through the project. I really do love that woman. Once all the paint is done, it's time to start on the floor. I did go ahead and install our new light fixture at this point, just so I'd be able to work with some light on. I thoroughly clean the floor and check for high spots. I didn't have any, but if you do have any high spots in your floor, you can hit those with a belt sander, get that leveled out. For underneath the tile, you have a couple of different options. I, I know nowadays they have some new fancy stuff, but I went with the tried and true concrete board for underneath my tile. Laying the concrete board can be done two different ways. You can glue and screw it where you put mortar down, lay your concrete board over that, and then screw it down. This is a great way to protect the floor, but if someone ever wanted to replace the tile down the road, it would be a very difficult undertaking. And we plan on living here for quite a long time, so if the tile does get changed, it's probably gonna be me. And so I wanted to make that a little easier on myself. So I went with option two, which is just to screw the concrete board down without the mortar part. Both options are fine, one is just more permanent. You do have to tape and mortar all the seams and then let that dry overnight. For a tile, we found a hexagon uh, marble look um, over at Lowe's that we liked and gonna be using a black grout to kind of make it pop and have some contrast. When designing your layout, most people find the center of the room and the idea is to center all the tiles within the room off of that center point. For me, I actually don't like that. Uh, this is where some of my OCD comes back into play. I like to have the tiles be centered to the door. So when you walk into the bathroom, the, the line of tiles that you're looking at is centered, and then I build off of that. When you lay tile, there's instructions as to what type of grout and what type of mortar you use, and also what kind of trowel you need to use on the floor. So make sure you're reading those instructions when you're buying all your supplies. I used a Ryobi tile saw for this project. Meh. I kind of wish I had bought something a little nicer. You can rent tile saws, but I knew this wasn't going to be our last tile project, so I thought just owning one would be more useful, but I, I do. I, I wish I had gotten something a little more expensive. It's cheap, it feels cheap, and it works cheap. But it did get the job done. For the grout, we went with the black to contrast the white, and it looks amazing. But cleaning it off the tiles after applying was difficult. It's really easy to end up with what's called grout haze, which is where after you clean off the excess, you've got this super thin layer of grout that doesn't want to come off the tiles. A trick for this is to mix one part white vinegar and four parts water to use as a cleaner. I found that combining this with a magic eraser was, well, magic. Now moving on to the vanity. Our old vanity had an offset sink and we decided that since we have two kids, we wanted to have the sink in the center. That way we have an even number of drawers on each side because the kids are going to have to share this when they get older. Thought it might help stop some fights of arguing over space. Anyway, this caused a problem because our plumbing was slightly offset and that has to get moved. So I called a plumbing buddy of mine. If you don't have a plumbing buddy, you can just call a plumber and had him move all the fittings and kind of adjust some of that stuff over so that way it would work with our new sink location. While he was here, I also had him change out the hardware in the bathtub to match the hardware that we chose for the rest of the bathroom. And he also helped me install the new vanity and the countertop. Lastly, I had him install the toilet. That's definitely not something that I wanted to possibly screw up. I'm not really interested in learning how to do plumbing. It's one of that and electrical. Those are the two things I don't, I don't want to mess with. So I just call people. Quick little side note on the vanity. They used to make these more like kitchen cabinets where they have kick plate. You can still find that kind, but for some reason, the new thing is to have an open bottom on your vanity. The, one of the issues we have with this is our piping comes through the floor. So if you look underneath the cabinet, you'd be able to see the plumbing. Didn't really like that. Problem number two is we have kids and stuff's gonna get lost under there. So we wanted to have a kick plate on our cabinet, but the cabinet we liked didn't have one. So I took some MDF and I just built a kick plate that I installed prior to putting in the vanity. I just painted it a flat black and it came out really well. Last step in this process is to hang all the new hardware and shelves. The previous setup had a towel rod and we switched that out for towel hooks which are now hung on the previously mentioned wings coating. We found this really cool toilet paper holder thing on Amazon that has a box on top of it for wet wipes. 
a new handheld holder, and we upgraded our shower curtain rod to be one of the curved rods, which creates more elbow room in your shower, and I highly recommend this. For the final touch, we added some floating shelves above the toilet. These are available at Lowe's, Home Depot, and they're super easy to install. And if you install them correctly, they can hold quite a bit of weight and you don't have to worry about anything coming down. After I was done with my side of the project, my wife went in and did her decorating thing. I may be good at building stuff, but this is really her area, so I just kind of step aside and let her do her thing. Let me know what you think about our new bathroom setup. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Good luck on your next project, and as always, stay bearded, my friend.